What's going on, Wolves? It's Lotus Aloba here, bringing you another episode of Matcha Mornings for the Creative Mind. And this is where I give divine insights that help you level up your creative, spiritual, and mental well-being with ease. And I love doing it. I love hosting this podcast. It is literally so much fun. We have a new little setup in the living room. We see my little matcha green couch or whatever. And you know I have my glass, my nice little mug of uh, matcha right here. And for those that can see it, it's clear because I have to show off that matcha green goodness. And we're going to take our celebratory sip before we get into today's episode. All right. So on the count of three, three, one, two, three, cheers. Nice little sip. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's that's the good stuff right there. So this matcha that I am drinking and sipping on today, it has black seed oil in it, ceremonial grain matcha, filtered water, vanilla almond milk, and then I have this nut pod, which is like a dairy-free alternative creamer, and it's in hazelnut. With a little bit of cinnamon on top. You know, cinnamon goes with all my matcha. It is what it is. Love to bring in that wealth and that abundance and that good luck. And it is absolutely delicious. I will definitely have the recipe for this matcha in the show notes so you can make it and tag me in it on social. Oh, heads up. On social, I'm not on Instagram until August. So in real time, it's like the early part of June. And yeah, I got this divine calling to just be like, Instagram is not giving me the vibe that I needed to give. It's not giving me what I want out of my life and out of my social experience. So I put it on pause for a few months and I'm actually enjoying TikTok. I know. Who am I? What type of millennial magic is going on here? I'm really enjoying TikTok. It's a lot of fun. There's so much creative freedom there. And I really enjoy that. Like, I'm really appreciative of the fact that I don't have to, like, perform. I just kind of get to be myself and make fun videos. When I have divine insights, I upload them there. So make sure you're following me on TikTok, at Lotus Aloba. Same handle. I'm going to be on Pinterest in July. So make sure you're following me on all platforms. So I'll be giving out insights and, you know, just different ways of expressing what comes up for me. And just trying out what works and, and seeing how it feels for me, you know? I think that's so important for us to not be so tied down to the same ways of expressing ourselves. You know, we're multifaceted. Do multifaceted things because you're a multifaceted person, right? So in the last episode of this season, we talked about what a practitioner even is and five ways to help you get your shit together. It's a really good episode. I would go and listen to it. And if you're watching it, And if you want to watch it, you can watch it on Spotify. We now are visual, baby. You can literally see me in real time. So if you're listening on Apple and that's your jam, let it be your jam. But if you want to like key key with me and actually see my facial expressions and like see the matcha that I'm making and parts of my home, (laughs) go ahead and follow me on Spotify and make sure that you leave reviews. We are a five-star podcast on Apple. Love to see it. And I would love to see it on Spotify. So go ahead and leave some reviews on there as well. So this episode, we are talking about why energy work is art and why you need to put some respect on it, okay? Let me tell you guys something. It baffles me that there are all these creative wellness platforms and not even creative wellness. Let me reframe this. Like all these creative platforms, these creative like events and festivals and there's never an emphasis on wellness and it blows my mind because i'm like wellness practitioners we're also creative people like where do you think we'd be getting the insights from the collective consciousness like i I don't know it blows my mind because i'm really just like is that what we're doing The fact that the lineups never have a practitioner speaking about wellness or how you can better yourself and your creativity with wellness. Like creativity and well-being, they go hand in hand. And yes, many of us were taught to create from our pain, right, to help bring us relief. But that's not the only way that you can create. Also, that's like the most exhausting way to create. Because essentially what you're saying to the universe is put me in heartbreak all the time. Put me in painful situations all the time so that I can express myself to my fullest ability. Like... That's wild. Like, who wants to do that? That, quick story time. Young Lotus was a singer. I can sing, y'all. Y'all probably will ever hear it. You might. I don't know. It's, I'm full of surprises. You might actually hear a song or two. I'm working on some stuff with one of my girlfriends. We'll see where life takes me. Anyway, when I was younger, I made a lot of sad songs. Like, a lot of sad songs. <laughs> 
something I'm just I'm just not even proud of. I mean, the song titles were like, what is it? The height of depression. Um, hopelessness. Hopelessness. Yep, that's it. That's the other one. Um, Mango, which is really about letting that man go. It's a play on words, you know. Um, Bark, which was another. It was um. <sighs> Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was making these songs, but they were so depressing. But it, it was helping me relieve relieve the the pain that I was going through. I was going through so much turmoil in my early 20s. It was a lot of shifting, a lot of just uneasiness. So the music helped me to soothe myself, to soothe the grief that I was going through and losing my grandfather and then losing my grandmother and losing my uncle. Like It was just back-to-back -back hits. And the music was helping me get through that. But when I listened to it, when I was in a better headspace, I'm just like... I never released those songs because I don't want to put that out into the world. And this is not to shame or um, downgrade anybody that does put sad, sad music out. Like, there's a time and a place for everything, for everyone. Like, I'm just saying what I don't want to do with my life and with my talents. That's all I'm saying. I listen to the music and, I mean, they're bops, baby. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just like, nah, I don't want to put that into the world. I don't want that to kind of be associated with my legacy, you know? I'm not saying that I'm not... I'm not ashamed of what I've gone through. Y'all know my story. I put it out here on the podcast. I put it out here on my social media. When I'm teaching classes, when I'm speaking at events, there is no secret that I've hid from you. I've had a crazy life. That's life. I just don't want, as I'm moving forward, that to be my legacy. I want people, when they find me or they find my content, I want them to feel like... I want them to feel happy about it. I want them to feel some type of joy, especially because I'm here to service and be of service to black bodies, in particular black women and black femmes. I don't want them to always see like a black person in struggle, a black person in pain, because we see that everywhere. It's literally throughout all media. It's what our ancestors have gone through, our elders have gone through. I'm really trying to create a new legacy where you see black women that are in ease, who have made peace with their past, who are not ashamed of what they've gone through, but also are not inviting that pain and struggle into their future, right? And I feel like that there's an art to that. There's an art within wanting to express joy, right? And one of the things that really came up in one of my corporate wellness sessions that I was hosting one of the incredible beings was just saying like, how can I, I feel guilty expressing joy or I feel irresponsible in being a joyful person when there's so much pain going on in the black community. And it was an, it was an interesting question because first and foremost, I relate and I understand that. And I also understand that that's a part of our, revolution it's a part of us being radical the fact that you can see a happy black woman chilling in her apartment happy not stressed out not crying over somebody not devastated all the time i think that those are necessary i think that there are different types of leaders for different parts of our evolution and i feel like i'm here to remind us that we are still allowed to have joy and it doesn't make us irresponsible black people because we're joyful and i really feel like that's a conditioning by white supremacy to make us feel like, damn, I'm a messed up person if I feel joyful right now because all these horrific, all these horrific things are happening in the world and I should feel really, really bad about it. That doesn't mean that I don't have compassion or empathy for what's going on in the world because the fuck, like shit is getting really crazy, right? But it makes me lean into my joy even more because if the world is like falling to shit, I want to make sure that there are some safe spaces for people who find me to come to, for my black femmes, for my black women to come to and be like, can I just be here without having to carry the weight of the world, without having to be socially responsible 24-7 when no one else is socially responsible for me? Like, can I just be? Can I laugh? Can I frolic? Like, I just want to do things that feel really good to my body, right? And I feel like that's also a part of why energy work is art. Because I'm able to have this peace of mind in the midst of chaos because of the energy work that I do on myself. Like my self-care routine is extensive. And I always tell people like, that's why I created the CPR method. And for those who don't know the CPR method, definitely check into some of my earlier podcast episodes because I go in depth. But a quick overview is a three-step program three-step method, if you will, that allows you to shift out of whatever vibration you're in. 
So after doing those three things, you will feel better. You may not feel 100%, but you will definitely feel better than what you felt when before you started. So it's C for create to connect, right? And essentially, it's using your creativity to connect back to source, whatever source is for you, God's source, whatever it is. You use creativity to connect back to that. A lot of times when we start to feel depression or anxiety, we're not creating. And if we are creating, we're creating in the purpose of trying to make a profit or be productive in society. And that's not what creativity is for. It just happens to be a benefit. But that's not what it's for. It's to keep you connected to source so you don't lose your sense of self, right? Then we have the P, which is praise on purpose. And that's all about remembering that there are things to be grateful for and satisfied about in this moment. It's not just when you win the lottery or when you find love in your life. Like, those are cool. But there are small moments in every day that can help you feel satisfied and that you should show gratitude for. And I say praise because it's gratitude infused with joy. They go hand in hand. A lot of times when we're talking about gratitude practices, we are saying things, and it's very mundane. It's very autopilot, right? It's very like, I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for the ability to like it's very robotic and that's not going to bring you more blessings because it's about the emotion that's being invoked from what you're saying that brings it on the words just help you focus the meaning right so when you are using praise on purpose you are literally saying joyfully like wow this cup of matcha this is so good this is so satisfying right now and it doesn't mean that it's toxic positivity where I'm not acknowledging all the bullshit that's happening in my life because I can't outrun it. It's going to be there. But it doesn't mean that I can't enjoy the moment. It doesn't mean that I can't enjoy the fact that I am sitting and the sun is beaming on me and I'm talking to you all and that my laptop works. That's very satisfying for me. I'm very grateful about that. Like there are just so many things to be grateful for in the moment. And it sucks that we are being conditioned to... Just be in pain all the time, to be in struggle all the time. The fact that that's just been our legacy as black people for as long as I can remember, I don't like that. And I don't subscribe to it anymore. And for those that don't want to subscribe to it anymore either, this is a safe haven for you to begin exploring what joy could look like for you and what ease could look like for you without you having to hear that, okay, but what about this? Okay, but this is happening in the world and oh my God, but let's not forget. Like, yes, I'm not, I'm not dumb. <laughs> I'm fully informed what's happening in the world. That doesn't help me. It doesn't help me to know that people still are not respecting black women. It doesn't help me to know that people are murdering people who look like me just because they look like me. None of that is going to help me live a better life. It's literally depressing. It's infuriating. It's rageful. But that doesn't serve my body. And to be quite honest, for my actual temple that I currently live in, my body cannot handle all of that. The minute that I get a little too angry, my body's like, girl, we will shut the fuck down. Uh, Ma'am, what you will not do is exhaust this body. Because that's what my 20s were for, right? I exhausted myself in my 20s. Um, I didn't realize that until I got really sick. And I realized, like, okay, anytime I feel a strong, strong negative emotion, my body shuts down. Organs start swelling. I start randomly bleeding. I start being in, like, the most worst physical pain possible. And it's because I am an empath. It's because I'm a practitioner. It's because I'm very tapped and tuned in. So when I take on that negative energy, I take on that negative energy. I just can't be angry. It turns to rage. The same way that I just can't be happy, it turns to joy. So when I'm thinking about that intensity that I have, and yes, Scorpio sun, lots of Scorpio. I have a Scorpio stellum, so y'all already know I'm very intense. I, I have to really be intentional about what I put my energy towards. And I'd much rather put my energy towards my joy and my ease and cultivating more spaces for y'all to feel joy and ease than for me to promote chaos, for me to promote things that are infuriating. It is not like people are not aware. Y'all are aware. And you know what I mean by y'all. The people who are not black, y'all are aware. But for whatever reason, you're not showing up to do the work that needs to be done, that your ancestors started, and that's something that you're going to have to deal with in your own time. But what I'm not about to do is exhaust myself educating y'all, um, advocating for, for y'all to realize our humanity. I'm going to be in my humanity and I'm going to invite as many people as I can to join me in that. And if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, it's not, right? So I say a lot to say that's praise, right? So clearly I want to do a very quick overview, but that's just not how life is set up today. 
So the R is to recover to resonate. And this is about moving the body. Quite often when we are experiencing depression or anxiety, we're not moving our body, y'all. You probably have are stagnant. And to be quite honest, you're probably like tensing up because you're feeling this influx of energy that does not feel good in your body. And we are conditioned to become stagnant. Almost, to, and what we don't realize is that that stagnation, every time you're not moving, you're inviting disharmony into your body. You're saying, hey, negative feelings and emotions, come live here. Come live here, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> but when you're inviting movement into your life, you're telling your body, look, I'm gonna be dealing with some heavy shit. I'm a human being. This thing happens in this experience, but let's move through it. Because I really don't wanna carry that heaviness in my body. I wanna be as light as possible. And I don't mean light as in white. I mean light as in weight. Like I don't want to feel so heavy. I want to feel lighter. And when we move our body intentionally every single day, whether it's through tapping, whether it's through meditation, breath work, through yoga, working out, whatever, taking a hot girl walk. I don't care what you do, but get up and do something. Intentionally move your body. And if you're doing those three things that can create to connect, that praise on purpose, that recover to resonate, you are going to feel better. It's been proven for over what? Maybe like 500 plus people have tried this concept already. And I might even be lowballing because this has been out for years. It works. It works well. Try it out. Watch the past episodes because they're really good and they will break it down even more. And I have specific CPR methods for different types of things. So I have a CPR method for anxiety, one for depression, one for grief, one for experiencing more joy, one for listening to your intuition better. All you have to do is go to the podcast. I have over 100 episodes. There's more than enough information for you to get into so that you can start living a better life now, right? Shout out Philadelphia. Okay. Yes. 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 All right. So I was asked this question, like, well, why do you consider your work to be art? And I realized in that moment that I don't think I ever considered it to be art. And that is, there's that disassociation again about because I'm a wellness practitioner, I didn't think I was a creative, which in hindsight is just the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. But there was for so long, I would think of creative, I think of somebody in tech. I would think of like a, somebody who is painting or drawing or sculpting or building. I didn't think that's what I was doing. But in all reality, like that is what I do. I sculpt energy. Okay, I paint vivid, vivid pictures for people to tap into so they can make their lives better. I build systems, energetic systems for people to tap into so they can live their best life. I'm an artist. I'm an energy artist. It is what it is. And one of the things that came up was that I really, really, really want to hold space and I continue to hold space and I do hold space for black women to come back to their ancestral wisdom to feel free to explore all of who they are, to express what they are deeply passionate about. That's all art. That's all adding beauty to the world. A black woman realizing what she's here to do, what she's here to be, it doesn't get any better than that. I think that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. A black woman living in purpose, enjoying her fucking life, Ashe, like, how is that not art to y'all? <laughs> Why are there not more practitioners at these freaking um, creative situations? Like, I'm ready when you're ready. I'm ready when you're ready. Because let me tell you something, you can't create and build and be an influencer without energy, boo. You're gonna need to get that together. Hit me up when you're ready. Um, another thing that is very artist like when it comes to energy is the ability to remember when we remember we empower ourselves we inherently know who we are and the experiences and curriculum i create allow others to do the same again i create artistry art create same thing it's in there i had to really sit with that and be like yeah everything i do is art and it needs to have more respect. 
And, you know, I'm showing up to spaces now where I'm like, if you don't see the value, I'm going to go. I don't need to be in spaces. I don't need to be in dynamics. I don't need to be around people who do not see my value, who do not see the artiste that I am, who when I say, oh, I'm a wellness practitioner, or I'm an embodiment coach, they're like, oh, I, you know, like when we thought creative, you thought what? Like, what did you think? <laughs> like, that's my energy now. Like, what did you think? I also create like mystic fragrances. That's still art. Just because you can also benefit from it in a more tangible way doesn't make it less art, right? Because it's not just going to hang on somebody's wall. Though you could put my my mist and my conjure oils on a wall. It look really good. The labeling is top tier because I also created that as well because I'm an artist. Ah, oh, this, this is sending me. This is sending me, y'all. Y'all, <laughs> let me know if this is resonating with you. Leave a comment. Leave a rating. Let me know if this, if this feels right to you. If you are a practitioner as well, do you also feel like that where people don't realize the artistry in what you do? Because all the practitioners that I speak to, and I speak to a lot of practitioners on a daily basis, all of my girlfriends, it just, it gives top tier. It gives, we are here to help move the world forward. We all feel that way. We're just like, damn, I feel so uncomfortable in these spaces. Or I feel like I don't need to be there because you're not really going to be talking about things that resonate with me. And that sucks because we are artists and we deserve to have a space there. And, you know, maybe I'll I'll create something. Maybe I'll create our own, like, conference or something for practitioners so that we can express our wellness as well, you know? And not in that, like, that whitewash way. Like, you know, I, I do not like going to wellness conferences that are led by white folks. I love y'all. And, yes, the swag bags are very nice. If we're not talking about the hair care products that I can't use because that's nothing to do with my texture or the spray products, the spray tan products. I'm already melanin. It doesn't take much for me to get tanned. You know, leave those things out. It's, it's, it's fun. It's fun. But I would prefer to have a conference where there are like black and brown and indigenous folk there talking about how their practices are art and how they can see the beauty in that and helping us to see the beauty in that so that we can continue to actively participate in that unfolding. That would be a vibe. I'm just saying. Let me know what y'all think. I'm going to take another sip of my matcha. And y'all should do the same. So another reason why I want to talk about why energy work is art is because many black folks have experienced the way that society and culture have subconsciously taught us to struggle to devalue our beauty, and to live way smaller than we actually are. And that's where a lot of our discomfort comes from as black bodies. All of that pain that you're feeling is conditioning. It's programming. Right? We don't get to do the whole, well, you know what? We, we weren't able to. I want to rephrase that too because I feel like as we're moving forward, as millennials are becoming parents, and then the Gen Zers are just being Gen Zers. Shout out to Gen Zers. Y'all are badass. I really appreciate your energy. I know most Gen Zers are like, millennials are so problematic. Oh my God. It's like, but I still love you. <laughs> like, you know, I don't think we're completely problematic. I think we've done a lot to allow you to have the freedom that you have. But I also just, just the confidence that Generation Z has, like, it took me to get into my 30s to get the confidence that they have, like, in their teenage years. So, like, y'all are fucking rock stars. I love you. Anyway, as black bodies, we are often taught to, like, fit into these weird paradigms. And it it's hard for us, right? We also aren't promoted artistry. Like, when we're growing up, if we say we want to be a singer, it's like, a singer? Like, you got to make real money. What are you talking about? Like, doctor, lawyer, social work is accepted teacher you know it's not the best but you're gonna find you know what i mean and it's just like though this artistry and all those things that i just said the fact that we can't grow up and say we want to be a painter is wild to me or that we were we were told that way because again things are shifting things are changing there are a lot of a phenomenal black and brown artists out there who are paving the way one of my favorites is so trill on instagram her artwork and her journey i've been following her for a long time and Wow. The way she shifted her life, the way she's called in divine love, the way she loves on her children, the way her children are just being their full expressive selves. Like, one of my wildest dreams is to see black 
children. Just be whatever they want to be without any limitations, without feeling the weight of racism and oppression and sexism and ableism. Like I just, oh, free black children is just, wow, that just warms my soul. And being able to see them now, I see them in my nieces. I see them in like so true, so trills uh, children. Um, I think about Willow and Jaden and how like, you know, can you imagine growing up with like unlimited resources? That is why they're as talented as they are and as brilliant as they are. Like they were really, they really just had the opportunity to do whatever and be whoever they wanted to be. They didn't have to necessarily worry about finances and survival. And look what they're able to accomplish. Willow is literally in like every fucking genre of music. And Jaden is like out here really changing the world for the better problematic at times yes but are we all problematic at times i just think it's part of our humanity you know i think that when we are talking about art we need to start opening the conversation up to wellness being a part of our artistry to us just following what's in our heart because think about it if it's your dream to be an, a painter or a sculptor and you've never seen anyone like you that's also why representation matters but it's also like wow this would make me feel really good and ultimately if you're doing things that make you feel really good and I'm not talking about like substances I'm talking about actual like human expression creative expression it will help your wellness I am as calm and as patient as I'm often told I am, which is always mind blowing to me. <laughs> and my niece is always like, you're just so calm and so patient. I'm like, really, you think so? She's like, yeah, I'm like, it's so nice you get to see this version of me. Cause I was, I was not. And she's like, what, you were? Like, it's such a shock to her. It's a shock to a lot of people. I think that that's really cool to see the evolution happening in real time. Anyway, um, I say that all to say, that when we are able to express ourselves create creatively and we can follow the dreams that we have, the desires on our heart, it will ultimately lead to our wellness. It will lead to our well-being. And they all go hand in hand. And if you haven't started doing energy work yet and you're creative, this is that invitation to start looking into it. Start reading a book about it. You can, again, I have a podcast about energy work. It's literally what you're listening to right now. Um, I have memberships that you can join that where we talk about energy work from a black perspective as well, because I think that's also important. You know, I've studied all of the greats in energy wellness. Caroline Miss, who's a medical intuitive, who's problematic. Donna Eden, who is also an energy intuitive, who is problematic. Oh, God. So many, so many people. But I've studied them so that y'all don't have to go through it and have to shift through the subtle racism that's in a lot of their work. <laughs> Abraham Hicks, love Abe, but some of the things they say are like, bro, the fuck are you saying? I kind of did all the work for you so you don't have to. So you can join any one of those communities, you can listen to the podcast, you can go on my YouTube channel, you can check out any of my social media platforms. But I also encourage you to do your own research on energy work, to take a class or so, you know, um, a really great introductory healing modality that could really help you tap into your energy is EFT tapping it's really simple to do it's not hard and there are tons of free resources on it if you want to follow the tapping solution they give great emails I teach free classes every quarter for the freelance for freelancers union for this year so you can join me in any one of my classes I do a bomb master class on EFT 101 um, I do that for Manifest House every month as well. Like There are affordable ways for you to get your energy healing on. But I encourage you to strengthen your connection to your energy healing and to energy work because it will strengthen your connection to how you express your art. It'll help you realize that you have art to express. It'll make it very easy in how you go about doing so. It'll make you more confident. You'll feel more secure and more grounded and more rooted. And you need all of those feelings in order to express art. To express art is to be courageous. To express art is to say, I'm going to be vulnerable. And I'm going to give the world something that they may not have had before. That takes a lot of courage. And let me tell you something. The only reason why I have that type of courage 
and let's let's not let, courage comes in different ways and shapes and forms, right? Like the courage to put up an unedited podcast episode is wild to me. <laughs> like the perfectionist that be trying to survive in me, she'd be like, "Girl, just just to tweak this, tweak this." And you know, after the first episode went up, after I edited it, and it was Mercury retrograde, so I don't know what I was expecting. And the unedited episode went up. I was just like, it is what it is. What am I supposed to do? What can I do? <laughs> just, it's out there. And people are going to vibe with it or they're not. And now I'm at a place where it's just like, that was courageous of me. And the only reason why I was able to do that, to put my artistry out on the table, unedited for y'all to um, listen to, to make comments about, to resonate with, it is because of the energy work that I do. It is because I take really good care of my mind, my body, and my spirit to the point where, you know, I might get feelings coming up in me where it's just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like anxiety might creep up. Depression might creep up. Um, that inner critic might might have a little something to say. But ultimately it gets quieted because my energy is just so sound. And when it's not, I know exactly what to do to make it more sound. So that I can show up and, you know, just express what's in me. You know, I talked about this with one of my other clients. And we were just saying how when it's our time to go, like there's two thoughts on this, and then I'm going to wrap it up. So first and foremost, when it's our time to go, I really want to be happy. And just like, yep, ain't nothing left in me. Let's go. Right? Like, I know because I'm like, let's, let's head on out. I did everything I could possibly do. I've given all that I could give. And that is why, as multifaceted creatives, don't just limit your expression to one medium. Unless that's your jam, right? Like me, I'm gonna be creating more podcasts. Y'all will see, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna be a serial podcaster and I'm fucking excited about it. Cause this is something that I love to do. I love being able to record and talk to y'all and getting the feedback later on and doing the lives and things like that. Teaching is another way that I express my artistry. Um, you know, doing guided meditations, things like there's so many avenues and I wanna leave these things behind because one, we just need more black people doing that, you know? I don't want future generations to only learn from white people. Like, look where that got us. It's a little chaotic. That's why I actively read black authors. I seek them out. <laughs> because, like, especially, and there's not a lot of us in wellness, to be quite honest. There are not a lot of black wellness books compared to the other artists, the Dwayne Way Wire, Wire, Weiner. Oh, I'm so sorry, y'all. I know y'all really love that man, and I messed up his name, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, the Louise Hayes out there, the Abe Hicks, like all of them, they have 20, 30 books. And, you know, there aren't a lot of black authors like that, with the exception of maybe like a Toni Morrison or a Maya Angelou, you know, or maybe an Audre Lorde or a Bell Hooks. Like we have like some names, but I want there to be more. I want more of us out here expressing the wisdom that our ancestors have given us um, in so many different ways. And my second thought is, I was thinking about it before and I'm like, you know, if I were to go today and transition on, I wouldn't want people to be sad. You know, I wouldn't want them to be like, oh my God, Lois is gone. Like, what's going to, like, don't be sad for me. I'm moved on up. Like, <laughs> I, I, am in, I am happy with my life. And is there more that I can do with it? Sure. I have so much creativity oozing out of me. It's, it's a little overwhelming at times, hence the energy work to keep me grounded and centered. But if today was my last day, I'd be really peaceful. I feel like I did my best. And I really hope we all get to a space where we can feel like that, where we're not worried that we haven't given our all. I feel like I've given my all that I have right now in this capacity, and like tomorrow I might have more energy to do more. But I love having that peace of mind. And having that peace of mind makes me even more fearless, makes me even more fearless in expressing my art because I don't really have anything to lose. I have everything to gain. And it's not like people don't make me the villain of their stories and things like that. Cause girl, let me tell y'all, it's giving Ursula. It's giving Magnificent. <laughs> Maleficent. It's giving 
<laughs> it's giving. It's giving on, on certain days. You can ask certain people and how they feel about me, and, and that's totally fine. I'm not here to be other people's heroes. I'm here to be my own hero. So naturally, that might make me somebody else's villain, and that's okay. But I say all that to say, express your art. Get into energy work. Put some respect on it. The next time you see an energy practitioner, thank them for their art. Thank you so much for giving us this art. You would make their day. Every time I get that compliment, I'm just like, do you see me? Like, it's so, it's so comforting. And it takes nothing for you to say that to a practitioner. And practitioners, start talking your shit. You're an artist. You're an energy artist. You're a healing artist. Let, let niggas know. Let them know what it really is. I'm out here creating art that not only provides you this feeling of, of safety, but it also is going to help you and your future generations. And we talked about this in the last episode. Whether you watch this episode in real time or not is irrelevant. You're still connecting to my energy. When I'm long gone, you're still connected to my energy. This video will live on for forever, as long as it possibly can. You're still benefiting from this conversation, from this connection, from my energy radiating through technology. Because energy can do whatever it wants. You're still benefiting. And these moments, these aha moments that you're resonating with, not only do you benefit, but your future generations benefit. Anyone you speak to afterward benefits. It's an ecosystem. It's an energetic ecosystem. That is what Global Land is. That is what I cultivate, not only for myself, but for my clients, for my members, for my wolves, for my global community. Like, it gives. It gives artists. It's given Basquiat. I love it. I love it, and I want that for you. So, what you can do about it? Let me know where your artistry lies. If you're a healing artist, if you are a energy artist, if you're a painter, if you make beautiful adornments for the body, let me know in the comments. Let me know how you express your art and make sure you're following me on social media. Make sure you're following me on TikTok to be precise. <laughs> TikTok. And Pinterest. Of course, Instagram. I'm still on there. I just don't know when I'm going to be back. And I... I I'll come back when I want to. I said August 1st, but we'll see. Um, and again, that's at Lotus Aloba. Of course, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. Make sure you share this episode because it will provide something for someone. And you will be helping to further on my artistry. And I really appreciate that because I love you so much. And I will see you for the next episode of Matcha Mornings. And until then, run back another episode. There's so many. Get into it. It's a lot of fun. All right? Love you.